All right, so today we're going to use our Autodesk app to draw a gift wrap pattern. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit because a pattern is all about repetition. So whatever I draw, I want to draw it small enough so that I can repeat it all over the same canvas. Before I start to draw, I'm also going to turn on my predictive stroke tool. I want to set it to about four to make sure that all my lines are nice and smooth. I'm going to pull out my puck and make sure that I have something that I like to draw with. The inking pen is one of my favorite things to draw with. It gives you a nice smooth line. I'm going to set the size to about 5.8 and the opacity to 100 so it's nice and solid. And then I'm thinking about a theme. I can either repeat lots of different images that are all related by the same thing or I can pick one image and repeat it all over my canvas. So my image is going to be a ornament from like a Christmas tree because I'm sitting here and my Christmas tree lights are on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a nice smooth curve. I might want to zoom in just a little bit more so I can start the other side at the perfect spot and I'll go ahead and I'll curve it down on the other side here. I might want to give this Christmas ornament a little bit of decoration so I'll come from one side to the other. Maybe I'll give it a little design like this in the middle. Hopefully the predictive stroke will even that out very nice. I'm just going to clean that edge up really quickly. Out of my library here, I'm going to pull out one of my erasers. And that way I can keep this image really nice and graphic. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and go back to my inking brush and come right down around here. Now I want to work on the top of the ornament. Again, I'm going to keep it pretty simple. Where'd it go? There we go. And then they always kind of come down here and across. Come back up. I'll go ahead back. Oop. Back one to pull out my eraser. I'm going to get rid of this inside part right here. It's a little bit much. Let me make my eraser just a little bit smaller. There we go. Like I said, I want to keep this image nice and clean and nice and graphic. Get a little bit bigger. Clean that up. All right. I'll go ahead back to that pen one more time and give it a nice topper here. And we're going to end it with a nice curly cue. That way, it gives it a little bit of a detail there since it's not actually hanging on a tree. Now, the nice thing about Autodesk is that I can use my copy and paste function to repeat this same image all over this canvas without having to draw it a bunch of times. I mean, you could, because then you could change up this design, but if you change up your colors, then the design can be repeated and it'll still look really interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this layer to up and open up my settings. And right up here at the top, the first thing it says is copy. So I'm going to go ahead and click copy. I'm going to come over here to my layers and I'm going to hit the plus. This is going to give me a new layer. So I'll click on that layer and then if I look over to from copy, I see the word paste. So I can go ahead and click paste. And then if I put my stylus here where I have my first ornament, you can see I can pull away another ornament. So I can just put this one in another spot and I'll put it far away because it's going the same direction and everything. Then I'll go ahead and click done. Now, I can go ahead and add another layer. I can click that layer again, and I can paste again. And I can continue to do the same thing, but I probably want to change this guy around a little bit. So up here at the top, I have all different things I can do. I can skew the perspective, but I don't really want to do that because then I don't know if it'll look like an ornament anymore. I can nudge it or bit and move it just a bit, but I want to kind of really move it around so we get some variety here. So I can flip her horizontally. Oop, let me turn off that nudge tool. So now I have one going a different way. And as you could probably imagine, I can just continue to go ahead and paste and flip and rearrange all of these different ornaments and really, really quickly go ahead and fill that page 
without having to draw a bunch of times. I'm, I'm going to put this guy here. And I'm not going to worry about him going off the page. This is supposed to be a pattern. It looks like it's repeated. And I'm just, as I said, going to go ahead and repeat this process and repeat this process until... And I can also move it freehand like that until this entire canvas is filled with these really, really cute little ornaments here. This one this way. Flip it all over, see which way you want to put it. You can adjust it just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give her one more. Just one more time. And I want to bring this guy down here. All right, so I like that. It has a nice variety. It doesn't look too repeated. Now, I have all these different layers, which is gonna be a real pain in the butt to try to click between the layers and work on all these different colors. So, I can click on this top layer here, and in my second row, one says merge, and that'll merge this layer with the one below it, but I just wanna put these all together on the same canvas so I can work on coloring all of them. So third one in, in that second row, I'm gonna go ahead and click merge. And now you can see down here, by viewing and unviewing that canvas, they're all on the same exact canvas. So now I can work on going ahead and filling these ornaments in. So if I zoom in just a little bit here, I can go ahead right up here to the top and I can click on my paint can and I can fill it with a gradient if I want but I'm going to keep this really really solid and graphic. Um, I'm going to turn my tolerance up because I do want a nice solid fill and I'm going to make sure that I have it on solid fill. Then I'm going to go ahead and click in my colors and I'm going to start to select some colors for my ornaments. And remember we have our color calculator that could give you a really cool a selection of colors. You could choose from your Copic colors because we remember that when we use our Copics we also get our complementary colors to go with them. So maybe I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to start there, come back out over here, and I'll start coloring in some of these ornaments, giving them a little bit of color. I'm trying to spread this color around so I don't have two things that are the same color. All right, then I can definitely come down here and I'll choose one of those comp oops, one of those complementary colors. And I'll zoom back in. And it looks like it was giving me some other color choices that I can explore. Ooh, that would be beautiful. I could have just changed all the colors of the lines. That would have been really nice. Just all different colored line drawings on the white background. But that's not what I'm working on, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so that I can get that to change its color there. I'll go back here. Let me investigate. Ooh, it gives me some other colors, some oranges. Maybe I'll go ahead and I'll pick that one there. They must be related, one of those collar families. That's why they're popping up. So I'll go ahead and trust it and stick with it. Let's see, it brings me back to my blues. And eh, maybe I'll just choose one more blue to go with it. A bluish green since it is Christmas. Get that guy out of the way. Oh, ooh, beautiful. But I'm not ready quite yet. I'm gonna give these two guys a background color here. All right, now I gotta color in their little hangers. I want them to look, I want them to be kind of silverish. So let me go ahead and just, I guess, really choose any color and really desaturate it here. That's the S. It's gonna bring us into that gray range. And we want a grayish color, maybe a grayish blue, so it sort of looks like silver. Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna get in there. There we go. In here. Yeah, very nice. All right, I'm trying to think of a color to make these inside parts. I don't know. I guess I could just leave them white. I could add two different colors in there. Well, let me experiment with the background color first. All right, so I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to go back to all those Copic, mark, Copic colors. And back into these. Hmm, background. I feel like I should pick a like color. Maybe I'll see what this does here. All right, I'm still on fill up there. Ooh, very, very pretty. And I definitely like the little thumbnail down here. Sometimes it gives you a different view. I could go ahead and click here. I could darken my color. Ooh, that pops a little bit more. I think I like that. I think I do. It's getting really close to these ornaments, but I feel like I need some yellow, so maybe that's where I'll put the yellow. Go ahead and pick some yellows here. Pick it up 
might be too yellow. Nah, just like that. Too light. There we go, right there. All right, let's go ahead and change those to yellow. All right, now I like it. So I do like that green in the background. I want to go ahead and snatch that green back up though really quickly. So here I'm going to pull out that and make sure that's on the green. Because I did like the ornament color. I think it was a bit darker. So if I just gently darken this. A little bit too much. There we go. All right. Beautiful. So I really like this um, gift wrap pattern. As you can see, it's kind of stylish. It's new. It's colors you wouldn't really expect it to be. So have some fun. Use the tools that you have here in Autodesk to create your very own gift wrap pattern in just a matter of minutes using our copy and paste.